when it comes to world events, it's the eclipses that really show us what's happening in the world. They're the single most important thing to examine. So as part of this talk, I'm going to be showing you and talking about the eclipse charts for December um, of 2019, the one that's going to be happening in June of 2020, and then also the mid-December 2020 eclipse. So those are the three steps that we're going to experience during this really interesting 2020 that we're living in. Now, first I want to answer the question though, why is this happening? You know, why are so many people falling sick? Why are we having an epidemic? Um, this is something that I actually expected to happen about 30 years ago when I read a book called Never Cry Wolf by Farley Moat. Okay? It's a really great book about a, um, a natural biologist who's hired by the government of Canada to go out and um, examine why the caribou herds were diminishing. Over the last you know, decades, the caribou herd had gone to these mass herds to hardly anything. And the government was like, how is this happening? We haven't been killing that many of them. Only Hunters take a few a year, but the, the herd is going crazy. It must be the wolves. The wolves must be ravaging. I think we need to destroy all the wolves. That was their theory. Okay? However, they'd been already hunting wolves for over 100 years, and the wolf population was actually quite reduced. So it's this really this question that they wanted to have answered. So they had this guy go out and live in the woods, and watch a pack of wolves for a year. So he goes out there, he's drop shipped all this food, and they, and they say, we'll pick you out of this wilderness, which they flew him in there with a the helicopter, in a year. So he lives out there for a year, and he starts watching these wolves, and he's going, where are they going to eat the caribou? Caribou, for those who don't know, is, is the reindeer. Um, it's actually a caribou, it's a, it's a deer, okay? But there weren't any caribou to eat. And he noticed that what the wolves were doing is they were running around eating mice all the time. And he marked out their territory and he saw, okay, these are the territory that this wolf pack lives in. Which means, and he watched them, and he watched how many, wolf, how many mice they would eat a day. And he'd make calculations that they ate thousands of mice per year. And he was shocked that there could be that many mice in their territory, but that's what he ate. And he started thinking to himself, there's no way the officials are going to believe me when I tell them this creature as big as a wolf is basically surviving off mice. And he thought, well, wolves and humans, you know, humans even a little bigger than a wolf. So he decided to only eat mice for the rest of the year. And so he set up traps and he lived off mice just like the wolves did for the remainder of the year, the majority of the year. So when the officials said, oh, we don't believe you, they're living on mice, he would just say, hey, I lived on mice. I didn't touch that food you gave me. Okay, that was his tragedy. So this guy was a, a nature lover, kind of an extremist, but he, you know, he wanted to get the job done right. So he became a control to see if a large organism could survive on mice. Okay? So while he's eating mice and watching this, finally the, the caribou, they migrate. They migrate from northern Canada into southern Canada. Um, as the weather changes, okay? So the caribou started migrating for the winter through the area he was at. And then the wolves went and picked off the caribou, okay? And they always picked off the stragglers. And he noticed that there was a lot of straggling caribou at the end of the herd that were looking ill, that had mucus on their faces, you know, that were snotting music, mucus as they were running. And that all, that all the caribou that the wolves turned, took down were weak and sick. But a lot of weak and sick ones, there wasn't enough wolves to take them out. So based on that, his assumption was that the reason the caribou herds were disappearing is because they had hunted, the, you know, the Canadians had hunted so many wolves in the last century that there simply wasn't enough wolves to eat the sick caribou. As a result, those sick caribou were infecting the tribe by breeding with the tribe. So these caribou who would have gotten picked off by the wolves when sick, because they had the weaker immune system, started to, um, you know, infect the herd. And the herd got weaker, not infect the herd, but breed with the herd. 
And when they breed with the herd, the herd immune system goes down. And then there's more sick. And then they breed and it becomes this kind of X squared problem of the herd getting weaker and weaker and weaker and the viruses and bacteria that infected the herd killing more and more of them. So they simply were facing a lot more deaths than the, than the herds had ever faced because the wolves, there weren't enough wolves to eat the weak, sick ones. And so the herd was getting infected. And not only infected, but the gene pool, the, the immunity of the gene pool was getting diminished because sicker and weaker caribou who would have gotten eaten by the wolves had an opportunity to breed into the herd. These would have, the weak ones originally were getting all eaten because they're the ones at the back of the pack when they're trying to escape the wolves. And the wolves are going to eat the easy ones, they're not going to risk their, you know, their health by taking on a really strong animal. They're going to go for the weaker one. So the caribou herds were disappearing because not enough of the weaker ones were getting taken out of the pack and breeded into the pack. Okay? So when I read that at a time 30 years ago when I was um, involved with natural health really heavily and watching people's natural health and seeing honestly just how unhealthy people were, I was like, oh my gosh, this is what's going to happen to the human race. You know, We've managed to reduce the immune system of the entire world. You know, the whole immune system of the human race is on an all-time low. And I thought to myself, one day, as a result of that, people are going to become, a lot of people are going to become very sick and die from it. Okay? Then there's this book, it's a great book, it's by George Fethulkas, who's a great, one of the greatest healers of the age, um, of the last century. Um, it's called A New Model for Health and Disease. In this book, George talks about his theories of why people are having more sicknesses than ever and how certain viruses that really never hurt people where that people's immune system is getting low enough that these viruses can kill people now. And that he wrote this book in 1991. In 1997, um, we had the bird flu. And that bird flu was known to exist. It wasn't this surprise virus that no one had heard about. They, they knew it existed, but it never affected humans. And all of a sudden, in 1997, it affected humans. And we had a little, a little scare, nothing compared to the corona. Okay? But we had a little scare by a virus that never hurt people before. So his prediction came true. Okay? This is a great book for anyone involved in healing work. It talks about the level of diseases and how disease moves through your body. It's some critical information that if medical doctors had this information, they would know what's really going on with the patients. Okay, so then when people over the last five years, and I've worked more with health, physical health in the last three or four years, People come to my house quite often and they come and say, oh, you know, it's the end of the world, it's going to be aliens, it's going to be a solar eclipse, it's going to be the Chinese invading, it's going to be this, it's going to be that, it's going to be a meteor, it's always something cool, you know. And I'm, my, my answer was, no, it's not. It's going to be an epidemic. It's going to be a virus or a bacteria. We're, we're setting ourselves up for it. We have set ourselves up for it with a record amount of humans on earth, with a record low in the strength of the human immune system. And as a result, we can get, a lot of people can get wiped out very, much more easily, okay? That was always my reply to those, you know, ideas of how we were going to get tested as a human race. Two years ago, I was chatting with Channing and she brought up the fact that um, the eclipse of December 20, what is it, 25th, 26th, eclipse of December 26, 2019, was going to have Pluto, Saturn and K2 and Jupiter all in the same sign along with, um, and this was in the eclipse sign, so the eclipse was taking place in the sign where we had Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn, K2 and the south node of Pluto. Okay, And she was thinking something big would happen. I go, yeah, it will be big. My guess is because it's falling in the signs of Capricorn, not signs of Saturn, because it's in a sign of Saturn, It'll be about life, and it'll be most likely, I think, some kind of epidemic that threatens people's life. Because signs of Saturn are all about, I want to live, 
and, I, and I'm having problems doing it. It's about a fear of death, a struggle to get away from death. And, um, and then I said, well, this Pluto South Node, that's the interesting thing, because the South Node of Pluto takes a very long time to go around the Zodiac. I don't even remember the amount of years. It's a long time. It's like centuries. So for there to be a Pluto-Saturn, Pluto-South Node conjunction at an eclipse point, that is an event that could literally take thousands of years before it's repeated. And I wanted, I told her at the time, I said, I want to program the South Node of Pluto into our software, do some research, see when was the last time we even had this kind of eclipse going on. And then I'll talk about it some more. A couple months later, I bought a new house, and the last two years I was spending all my free time renovating my house, and I never programmed the South Node of Pluto into the software to look at past um, South Node Pluto type things and how they might have impacted life on Earth. So here we are today. So I want to talk about this eclipse. Okay? So the eclipse we had, this is the first of three eclipses I'm going to talk about. We had the December 2019 eclipse on December 26th, okay? We had Sun, Moon, Jupiter, South Node, Saturn, Pluto, and Pluto South Node all together in the sign, sign in the sign of Saturn, which means we're dealing with our health, okay? We're dealing with survival. And of course, that triggered is responsible for the corona virus, okay? Now, some of the problems in this chart, when we calculate that chart from the ancient prime meridian at a place called Yamakoti, which I talk about in my Mahurta book, those planets fall in the eighth house, which is the house of death and transformation. So that makes us a more vicious, difficult eclipse worldwide. And then to see how things are being impacted in every country, we would want to um, calculate the eclipse for every capital of every country to see how every country is doing. I haven't spent time doing that. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just going to talk about this on a global level. But you can punch in that eclipse time for your particular country or the country you're interested in. Okay? But eighth house, of course, is death. It's trouble. Now, the good thing going on with this eclipse is that on one side of the eclipse, in the sign next to the eclipse, we had Venus, and in the sign behind it, we had Mercury. Okay? So we had two benefic, helpful planets softening up that eclipse a little bit more. Okay? So if one of those benefics had been somewhere else, we could be sitting in a worse place than we are. One of the other things that happened in this eclipse is we had Saturn in its own sign. Now let's say this eclipse had happened in Saturn and Sagittarius, in the sign of Sagittarius. That's a warrior sign. Then this, this eclipse would have brought a lot of world tension in the context of battles and fighting and wars. It would have been really bad for that kind of stuff. In the sign of Saturn, it has to do with Saturn, which is our defense system from, it's our immunity. Saturn is our disease resistance, is exactly what it is. And the problem we're having is our disease resistance as a race is low. And so viruses are starting to uh, impact us that we could have shrugged our shoulders at a century ago. Okay? So the good thing is Saturn is in his own sign. So he's going to fight and try to do his best. So this is a transition time, uh, really the beginning of a transition time of the human race starting to rebuild their immune systems which is what we've lost. Okay, why have we lost it? We've lost it from primarily losing touch with nature, which is Saturn. Not living as natural beings. What are natural beings? They need sunlight. Humans need sunlight. The majority of people on Earth are vitamin D deficient. Areas where there's more vitamin D deficiency, like UK, are having a higher death rate because they're more cloudy. Okay. So there seems to be something going on with, yeah, the places with less sun, there's more people dying of this virus because when your vitamin D is low, you're going to have a problem with um, your immunity. That's one issue. Exercise is natural. It cleans your system, it oxidizes your bloodstream, it kills viruses. People don't exercise enough. The other thing is, um, is people are over-medicated. 
And you'll see, if you look at the death rates per country of the coronavirus, you'll see that countries that have, a, that are, have more overly medicated people have a much higher death rate. Check China compared to the United States or Netherlands, which are countries that are super medicated countries. Now, medicine's a wonderful thing, and it should be taken if you're not going to die from what you have. Then you need to take the antibiotics, the anti-inflammatories, whatever it is that does it, so you don't die right away. Okay? But if you take strong medication for anything else, it's not worth the price, because there's always a price of medications. And the doctors are very honest about it. It's on the paper you get with your drugs, and it'll give you a list of side effects. All those side effects fall into one category. This is hurting your overall immunity. This is bad for your body, but if it's going to keep you alive, it's worth it. You bet it is, right? If you need an antibiotic to keep you from dying of you know, typhoid, you better take it. Otherwise, you're going to die of typhoid, right? It's all over. But if you take an antibiotic because you have a sore throat that might take you a month to recover from, but you take antibiotics anyway, then you've just compromised your entire immune system for the rest of your life. One course of antibiotics can destroy a person's intestinal flora, the good bacteria in their intestines, to the degree that it takes years to rebuild, if the person tries to rebuild it. Most people don't even think about it. They just keep not rebuilding it. And when that intestinal flora is not operating correctly, when we don't have the right balance of intestinal bacteria, we, our immune system plummets. Okay? So overly medication, over medications, the side effects, that's your immune system getting weakened and making you more susceptible to the next issue. So the healthy way to use medication is, if I'm not, I'm going to die, so I better take it. Now that I'm not going to die because I've recovered with the help of the medication, I'll build my health up and build my immunity up so that I overcome any of the negative impact of the medications, any of the side effects, any of the weakening of my immune system. Okay? Unfortunately, what's happening now in a lot of medical, a lot of countries, the medical community is giving antibiotics and cortisone drugs all the time. And these things dramatically weaken your immune system. Again, you'll read about that in this book if you choose to read it. Okay, I'm not a doctor, I'm just reading, quoting doctors here. Okay? Um, are dramatically weakening your immune system. And then you're more susceptible to the next thing. Here's an interesting statistic. In the last 10 years, the amount of people who've died from the flu has gone up five times. Five times the amount of people are dying yearly from the flu now, like in 2019, not this year. This year is all about corona. But last year, in 2019, than they did in 2009. Five times increase. What's changed? What's changed is the immunity of the human race in the last 10 years has dramatically declined because of excessive over-medication in the last 10 years. It's dramatically, over-medication has dramatically gotten worse in the last 10 years. The result is the human immune system as a collective, as a race, is weaker than ever. And the flu is killing five times as many people. And as a result of that weakened immune system, corona is going to kill and is killing many more people than, than you know, it would have. Okay? And it's possible that the corona may not have even bothered us a hundred years ago. You know, it's hard to say. Our immune system has faltered so high. But it's real interesting. If you look at China and see their death to recover, it's a very low percentage. Look at America or other countries, the death to recover is at, uh, as many as 10 to 20 times higher the death to recover ratio in China. Why? Because Chinese aren't as overly medicated. And they haven't been overly as medicated for as many generations. The Western countries, they've been overly medicated since the 20s, since the 1920s, for 100 years now. A lot of Asian countries didn't start getting heavily medicated until like the 70s. So like, they don't have multiple generations of deterioration of their intestinal flora to have weakened immune systems. You know, when you 
give birth to a baby and your intestinal flora is bad, your baby inherits those same bacteria that you're that are trying to that you have. Okay? We pass our immunity on to our children, not through the DNA, literally through the blood. Okay? Um, through the mother's blood. And then there are things that can shock the DNA into um, lowering immune systems too, like radioactive stuff and all kinds of toxins in the environment. But the majority damaging thing are really overly medication. Okay? The second thing, of course, is food. People don't eat enough food that's easy to digest. So many people eat food that ends up destroying their, back, their intestinal bacteria. As a result, more and more people are finding they can't eat wheat, which was a staple food for centuries. It's again this compound problem, too much bad food. So that's why this is happening. It's just the collective weakening of the human immune system. Okay? Now, the good news is Saturn's in its own sign. So people are going to start realizing, wait, we have to build our own systems up. Now, one of the troubling things we have in this eclipse chart is Jupiter is involved in the eclipse sign. Okay? What's wrong with that? That means Jupiter is not going to function for us. Any planet that's with the eclipse planet is not going to work right. Saturn's there. The immune system's not there to help us through this. However, Saturn's in its own sign. So it's, it's going to, you know, there's the incentive for Saturn to win. So whenever a planet's in its own sign and it's getting beat up, yeah, it can get beat up, but it's going to, in the end, it's going to win. So in the end, the human immune system's going to start coming back. Okay? You know, people are going to start going, wow, this, I need to start living healthier. Okay? I have to take care of my longevity and my health. I need to improve my disease resistance, which is something nobody doesn't get done, especially in the Western world. Look, China death rates are so much lower. Chinese medicine is, when, you, when you're sick, you stop paying me. That's the ideal in Chinese medicine. The Chinese doctor's job is to keep your immune system up so you don't get sick. The job of the Western doctor is to ignore your immune system and when you get sick, make money over the fact that your immune system was not only ignored, but abused. Okay? So, that's why I said we have 10 to 30 times higher death rate in, in more modern countries than these Asian countries who have a very low death rate from the corona. So we have Jupiter in the eclipse. So Jupiter can't cut it. Who is Jupiter? Jupiter is who you believe in. Jupiter is who you give your power to. You say, I have faith in you more than myself. That's Jupiter. And here's Jupiter smashed by the eclipse. Okay? Who do we give power to the most in this day and age? It's the medical doctors. Wow, the amount of power they have. You know, the Pope can say, Trump is the Antichrist. Get him out of office. And he won't get thrown out of office. But a band of doctors can say, we need to study Trump. Study him, bring him in for testing, and say he is medically unfit for office, and he's removed. So what I'm saying is, doctors have more power than the Pope does, than any religious figure. That's very different. Long ago, if the Pope said, you're out, you would have been out. I mean, bad word from the Pope, you were screwed the rest of your life. No one was going to listen to you or look at you, right? So Jupiter, is, we see it as our religious people. It's our preceptor, who we believe in and who we follow based on our beliefs. It's more the medical doctors on a collective level these days where people believe with unfounded faith, without knowing even what doctors are doing, without having studied their health, without having studied nutrition, you know, the people have, the people, they haven't studied health, nutrition, medicine, and they go and they believe in what the doctors say, blindly. Unfortunately, the modern medical doctor knows nothing about health. They only know about disease. Which means you can go to the doctors when you have a disease, but you can never go to a doctor to become healthy. Becoming healthy is different. It means you build your body up in a way that you don't get sick, that you don't get ill. Okay? So, the people we believe in, the doctors, as Jupiter, are not going to be able to cut, cut this. Our faith in them is being shown to be misplaced. And as we continue to place faith in them, no. Who are the heroes right now? The nurses, right? Everyone's going, those nurses, wow, right? They're risking their lives to give people a little comfort in the hospitals. 
Nurses are Venus. Venus is moving towards its deep exaltation point more than any other planet. Venus is moving right towards, it's really close to its deep exaltation point when this eclipse happened. So the, the nurses are the heroes. But the doctors, they're not going to be the heroes. The people we believe in. Because Jupiter's close to its debilitation and it's being beat up by the eclipse. So this is gonna, this eclipse is to show people the limitations or failures of the modern medical practices. When we start studying these statistics, when this is all over, and you see the different death rates, and you go, why does this country have a 100% death rate? Like in the Netherlands, no one's recorded as recovered. Well, everyone has died who, who's done with it. There's a lot of people who have it who haven't died, but they got no recovered cases. They're all, everyone's dying there. Why? Because Netherlands is one of the countries that severely abused antibiotics, which means they destroyed their intestinal bacteria, and as a result, their immunity is lower. Okay? The good news is Saturn's there in its own sign. So in the end, Saturn's going to win. The human immune system is going to rebuild itself. People are going to get motivated to live more healthy. They're going to realize the people I believed in to keep me healthy weren't able to do it. So I got to rely on myself, my own immunity. See, Saturn is your disease resistance. Saturn's a loner. Because you're really pretty much relying on your own immunity for your ability to survive disease. And so the only thing you can do is work on your health, which is Saturn. Okay? Um, now the fact that Pluto, first of all, I love Saturn K2 conjunctions. As I teach in my Rahu K2 course, when you get Saturn with K2, people are willing to change. When you get Saturn with Rahu, a person is scared shitless to change. All right? But Saturn with K2 is one of the things I like. And that's the south node, okay? And it's there. So yeah, Pete, there's a desire to change, to get away from the old that's not working. Because see, the K2 is always the old. K2 is what's old and worn out. Saturn is, I don't like this. I want to throw it away. Right? So when Saturn's with K2, first people want to throw away what's not working. That's great. That helps us move into a better future. When Saturn's with Rahu, on the other hand, then what happens is a person's like, I don't want where I have to go to grow up. Because Rahu's where you have to grow to grow up and evolve. And when Saturn's here, you're like, I don't want to go where I have to go to grow up and evolve. I'm going to stay where life doesn't work. So we're really lucky that we have Saturn with K2 on this eclipse, okay? Which means we're beginning a point where we're going to move forward with our health and immune system. However, we have Pluto there, which means it's not going to be over overnight, okay? We have the south node of Pluto there, which is the slowest moving node out there. Okay, I'm forgetting right now how long it takes to go around the zodiac. It's over a thousand years to, to go through the zodiac, the south node of Pluto. Okay. Um, okay, now listen to this cool thing about the eclipse before I forget. There's this great book, it's called The Eagle and the Lark by Bernadette Bradley. And in this book, she talks about eclipse cycles. And what it is, is that eclipse cycles run about 1,200 years, which means every 18 years, 18 to 19 years, the eclipse that's every 18, 19 years is the same cycle as the one 18 to 19 years previously. And all these eclipses in one cycle have a similar theme. And every 1,200 years, one eclipse cycle ends and a new eclipse cycle begins. And there's multiple eclipse cycles running at any time. There's like, there's like 36 eclipse cycles running about at any time. Okay? Now, the eclipse that brought about this corona infection that was part of this chart, we call it the Three South. Now listen to the results from this book. Okay? This family of eclipses brings with it the sudden ending of associations or of a relationship, possibly with a younger person. There is a large emotional component as the Pluto is involved in a sense of traumatic transformation. This can be through news received or short journeys undertaken. The part I love is the news received and the short journeys undertaken. Wow, this whole thing spread because people are going from here to there, taking journeys, right? That's what spread the coronavirus so fast, is how much we travel these days. So now no one wants to travel. 
Um, news received. Oh, the media is freaking people out. I'm freaking you out, I hope. My job is to freak you out and make you exercise and eat better and not take antibiotics unless you're going to die in a day. Um, change of associations or relationships. Yeah, people are dying. And they don't even get to hug the person who's dying. You know, they're like in a room and you're out there watching them die, you know, because you can't go in and get infected. Um, it's a traumatic transformation. Now, this last time we had a three south eclipse was, was two to three months. It was the eclipse following 9-11. It was three months after 9-11 we had this same eclipse of the same cycle. And of course, journeys came to a hold. People were freaked about traveling. 9-11 happened due to a journey, an airplane crashing into towers, right? It was traumatic for lots of people, especially wimpy Americans who aren't used to having anything happen to them. It was really scary. Um, so, here we are in the same eclipse cycle. All of this time it has a completely different basis. It's in a different sign, and it's bringing about, it's got different planets involved, and most importantly, it has Pluto and the South Node there. So this is a long-term thing. This is going to take a long time. It's not this motion that's starting with this eclipse of, okay, humanity, rebuild your immune system or else it's going to be all over for you eventually. It's starting now and it's going to take generations. We're not going to do it in my lifetime. We're just going to slowly start moving forward. The damage to the immune, human immune system that's taken place over the last 200 years is not going to be over we're not going to fix it in a generation. We have to breed healthier babies who breed healthier babies. And that's shown due to the fact that Pluto and the South Node are here. The immune system's at an all-time low. 97, 1997, an avian flu, which never bothered people, started killing people. That's how low we got. 2019, five times the death from flu as five years before. What changed? They added flu vaccines. Everyone started getting flu vaccines. I don't know, I'll let you draw your own conclusions to that, okay? Um, now, coronavirus, you know, and this is the beginning of the change. Now, I don't think this is the only bad bout we're going to have with viruses in the next 30 years. I think this is going to become a more regular thing now. I think this virus is here to show us, what this eclipse is here to show us, is that we're at an all-time dangerous low because of all this stuff falling in the sign of Saturn with Pluto and the south node of Pluto. And that it's, humanity has no choice now but to move their immune systems forward, to holistically rebuild their immune function. And we won't be able to do it fast enough. We're so low, we're so vulnerable that yeah, this isn't going to be the only experience like this. We'll have more down the road. Okay? But slowly, we'll build up our immunity. And in a few generations, we'll be back where we should be. And this is an event, I think, that's going to trigger the awareness of the need on a global level that at the end of the day, you can't just go to the doctors. They don't have enough respirators. They don't have a cure. They only know what's going on. The nurses will sure be nice, okay? But that doesn't make you happy when you're dying. So, um, all you can do is be Saturn. Take the time, to, and time to keyword word for sound, to rebuild your immune system. Have kids with better immune systems. They'll have kids with better immune systems. And then we'll move forward. The degree with which we keep trying to maintain our health with over-medication, and the degree which, with which we try to nourish our bodies with food that is not food, is really going to determine how long this is going to take, how many generations it's going to take, and how many epidemics that make us not be able to leave our house come about before we can. But I don't think this is the only one. I think we're going to need a couple whacks on the head um, to get everyone got moving forward. Okay? So that's that eclipse. Let's move on to the next two eclipses, because we all want to know when is this going to end, right? When's it over? Well, it's not going to be over until the human immune system is restored. We're in a vulnerable place for the rest of my life. The next generation a little better. Yeah, the rest of your life, the human race is going to be in a vulnerable place. But we can build our own immune system day by day and be less vulnerable tomorrow than today. It's going to take a long time to end. But let's talk relatively now. 
It will end this year. We'll end next year. What are we dealing with? The next eclipse, we need an eclipse to turn things around. So eclipses can turn things up or they can turn things down. The next eclipse is June 21st of this summer, 2020. In this eclipse, I want to read you the results from 4 North. Okay? Um, restriction, inhibition, restraint, separation, and illusions are the trademarks of this family of eclipses. Well, that's going to be obviously happening, right? That's how great those eclipses are. Duh, right? We can expect that. Events can occur which seem to block the individual. Yeah, a lot of people are already feeling blocked. In this blocking, the individual is very prone. This is the important part. In this blocking, the individual is very prone to misjudge his or her strengths or the situation and is best advised to wait until the eclipse passes before taking any real action. This is a difficult sero cycle or eclipse cycle. Okay? So, it's basically feeling overconfident, thinking we're doing better than we are. So when this eclipse comes along, people are going to start thinking, the politicians are going to start saying, yeah, we're, we're through this now, it's better now, but it's not going to be true, okay? It's not going to be true. It'll be an illusion, okay? Um, we'll misjudge our strength, okay? Things are not going to be as good as they seem when this eclipse comes. This is where you think things are better than they are and then you start making mistakes. So you've got to be really careful when they start announcing later in the year. Again, that eclipse on June 21st will last until December 14th. The effects will be dominating till not December 14th, till a month before December 14th when the lunar month begins. So basically we're going to have five months of this eclipse effects. So you want to be really, really careful during that time because things are still going to be very dangerous out there. What I don't like about this eclipse is that from the um, Yamakote Prime Meridian, which is the global ascendant place, we've got Sun, Moon, and Mercury in the 8th. We've got the 8th house involved again. So yeah, people are going to keep on dying after the next eclipse. Mercury's there, which means the market, Mercury rules one of the market planets, is going to continue to tumble. We're going to have you know, ups and downs, especially in the U.S. stock indexes, because from the U.S. ascendant, the Mercury, Sun, Moon are in the third house, which is always the up and downs. It works for a while, the minute you look away, it falls. So, ups and downs. Um, but it's in the eighth house from the, um, you know, the global ascendant, I'll call it. So we're, caught, we're again dealing with death and fear, and it's going to be more hidden for a while, but like I said, it's an illusion. We have to be very careful this year. The thing I don't like about this next eclipse chart is that Rahu is in a different sign than the Sun, Moon, and Mercury. See, the Sun and Moon are the official eclipse. Rahu is in a different sign, but it doesn't have to be in the same sign to cause an eclipse. It just has to be close enough. Rahu is a couple of degrees away from the Sun-Moon conjunction, so it's a full eclipse, okay? But Rahu's not like with Mercury, Sun, and Moon, it's in a different sign. And so it's with Venus, who's not with the Sun and Moon, but with Rahu. And that worries me a little bit, because Venus rules the DNA, all right? So when you got viruses involved and you got Venus involved in an affliction, basically, with Rahu, what you get is mutation of the virus. So I think people might think things are better, and one of the reasons, will, but it won't be, and one of the reasons it won't be, because I think there's a very good chance the virus will mutate as a result of that Rahu-Venus conjunction, okay, which I don't like. Um, two weeks later, there'll, there'll be a lunar eclipse where the, the sun will be in the same sign, or no, it won't be, sorry. For, in two weeks, sorry, a month before, two weeks before that, there's a lunar eclipse. And in that lunar eclipse, the sun and moon will be in the same sign as Rahu. Okay? So we have a lot of trouble still this year. This next eclipse is not going to help us out. We'll start thinking we're safe, that we can go out and live a normal lives. No, don't. Stay home, build your immune system up. Okay? Um, all right. The results of that are not a nice eclipse. Then we have the four south eclipse, December 14th, 2020. Let me read you the results of that. This series carries with it a very 
get very strong emotional feelings concerning relationships and or money. There could be anger or lust. There's a sense of fadedness and individuals may find themselves caught up in relationship events which are beyond their control. There could also be the sudden desire to finish a relationship. These emotions may be blocked or checked in some way, leading to a great deal of frustration. The best approach to this eclipse is to avoid rash actions until the issues settle down. So we are not getting a nice eclipse on December 14, 2020. We're going to eclipse of racial tensions and financial tensions, which means the economy is going to suffer, continue to suffer, during this time. In the summer eclipse, yeah, they're going to start saying, oh, the economy is going to rebound. They're going to be overconfident about their economy. It's not. Mercury is part of the eclipse. The economy is going to not get any better. When you watch the stock indexes, it's not any true measure of people's buying power. The economy is dependent on a person's buying power. And, you know, I've, you know, watched how things are that when those stock indexes do not accurately reflect people's buying power. Okay? In fact, you can find what people's buying power is more accurately by selling things on eBay and watching how much you get for your toys and junk that you sell. It's very different and it's true. Um, it's a true reflection of people's um, buying power and it's not the same as the stock market values, okay? All right, so um, it's going to become really clear what an economic shambles we're in during the fourth south eclipse on December 4th, okay? In this eclipse, from the world ascendant um, at Yamakoti, the ancient prime meridian, the eclipse takes place in the second house, the house of wealth and money and resources, right? And Mercury's in the eclipse once again. It's actually in the same sign. It's in the second house with the sun, moon, and K2. So that means the market, which is Mercury, the fluctuations in the market, is going to get eclipsed. It's, the market's going to go down. Okay, We're going to be suffering through that eclipse. And so most of it will be the dread of the financial market. This is going to cr create tension in relationships between different countries. Because on a global level, relationships given problems means that the countries will be upset at each other and blaming each other and fighting like you know a man and wife that want to get divorced. So we can expect a lot of tension in that, those fields. Um, the good news is Mars is not involved in the eclipse. So I'm not expecting we have any, like wars and, any, and that kind of real nasty stuff. But I think countries are going to have a very hard time agreeing on things. I think there's going to be blame directed at different countries. People have already started beating Chinese up on the streets thinking it's their fault. It's not China's fault any, than anyone else's. In fact, China handled this better, has a lower death rate. We should all give China a clap for their ability to take their people um, and control them in a way that they don't go out and spread the disease. And also, just the fact that in general, they haven't destroyed their immune system as much as the Western world has. Okay? And India, of course, you know, thumbs up to India how they've dealt with this. They've dealt with it better than any other nation. Um, okay. And India has not been medicated for as many generations as Western nations are. Although India is very medicated in the recent generations. It's, they haven't been doing it since 1920s. Okay? All right. So in this last eclipse I'm going to talk about, the December 14th, it's showing bad for the economy. Jupiter's in the third. You know, Jupiter in the third, ups and downs with your finances. Mercury's conjunct in the eclipse in the second is showing trouble with money. Okay, So financially things are not going to be good. This is not showing the deaths by that eclipse. We're not going to have people dying all over the place, but people will be financially worried. And that on your on a personal level, yeah, you might end up having to live with your mother again, you know, because this is really a thing of relationships ending or coming together that maybe you, you didn't want. But there's nothing like not having enough money to make you have to shack up and spend time with the people you don't want to spend time with, right? So expect that. Now, how do these eclipses affect you personally? You want to look at your chart and see if a, the eclipse lands on one of your planets. Okay, if it lands in the same sign, you'll feel some of it. If it lands, the closer it lands to your planet or your house cusp, the more it's going to affect you. And so. These eclipse themes in this book will affect you on a personal level if they hit your planet. 
But regardless, they're going to affect us on a global level. So basically, things, there's no chance in hell things are going back to normal this year. We don't have the eclipses to help us move into a better world. We've got more disease and more bad market coming in the summer eclipse. Disease will fade out by the time we get to the December eclipse, but there will be major financial stresses. It's not a good financial chart. This, this buying power will be low. Um, 2021, we've got an eclipse in, um, what is it? I think, believe it's the end of May. Okay, end of May, beginning of June, we have some eclipses. It's a happy eclipse. Okay, I'm not going to get into detail on that eclipse. I'll probably save that for later. But it's a happy eclipse. In fact, I will talk about it real quickly. Okay, the summer 2021 eclipse is on June 10th is the solar, which I, is the more one to focus on. May 26th is the lunar. Okay, it's a five north. Let me read you that one. A very unusual series series involving sudden flashes of ideas that seem to have a psychic or unconscious flavor to them. Hunches, visions, prophetic dreams are the essence of this family of eclipses. A truly creative series which should leave the individual enriched. The ideas or hunches which come from this eclipse can be acted upon. Wow, that's what we need. We need a new way. We need to be creative and move forward into a better future. We don't want to repeat this. The politicians are saying, we're going to make things the way they were. And I'm like, no. If we make things the way they were, we're going to hit this same mountain of shit again, right? We need to make things better than they were. And this eclipse that's hitting us um, on June 10th, 2021, is a creative, new insight, sudden flashes could come out of anywhere. So maybe even the politicians will get some lightning bolts going off in their head that make them think of some things that could actually help us you know, not just for a year or two, so they look good, but help us as a human race, okay? And hopefully medical doctors will get the insights as well. Um, so it's very promising, this next eclipse. I wouldn't, can, can't imagine a better eclipse than this North 5 for getting us going in a new direction. Next year, I'll look at this eclipse in more detail, but it's a, it's a nice eclipse. So until that eclipse effect starts coming, that June 2021, you want to hold on for the ride. It's not going to be, it's going to be stressful. So we're talking over a year of stress, a year and three months of stress most likely. Maybe a little less if we're lucky, but a, we got a, a good year plus of stress. Build your immune systems. That's all the astrology for today, but I will spend a few minutes talking about your health for those who want to start building their immune systems. The most important thing is to start rebuilding your intestinal bacteria so that you can manage the viral and bacterial infections that are part of life on Earth and have always been part of life on Earth. Think about it. We grew to the super species combating severe illnesses and we lived as a species, you know? We never needed to be heavily medicated to survive. You know, there's, a, there's two basic, most basic philosophies, you know? We can have the philosophy of man versus himself or man versus nature. Well, man can't beat nature. But man can always improve himself. That's man versus himself. We have to adopt a Saturnine attitude. It's me against me. It's not me against you. It's not me against the bacteria. It's not me against the virus. See, the whole modern world of medicine is it's us against the attacker. It's about that thing that wants to hurt us and kill us. And they've gone after that thing, and they've tried killing that thing while it was in your body, and as a result, killing your body. It won't work. It's me versus me. It's you versus you. How are you going to make yourself better? Oh, I really want to eat that junky Domino's pizza tonight. Now here's a battle, you versus you. Are you going to eat that, or are you going to go make yourself a fruit smoothie? With lots of vitamin C and all the nutrients you need, and the pulp that nourishes your back bacteria, the good guys that you need to live. Or the pizza that's going to go into your intestines, cause you to fart and have bad gas and have stinky poops, which basically means you just fed the bad bacteria again. You know, there's more in bacteria in their body. There's more bacteria in your body than you have cells in your human body. The bacteria are more plentiful than your own bodily cells. 
They're your number one friend or number one enemy, depending which ones you're growing with the food you eat. Okay? So eat better. Fruits, vegetables. These are the ones that give have the fibers in them that are the friendly bacteria need to live. Okay? Food cooked to mash, you know what's bad for you. You know, stuff that makes you fart and stink and burp, you know, meat. Those things feed the bad bacteria. And meat eaters always have the addition of parasitic infections in their intestines. If you eat meat, you've got a parasitic infection. I'll bet everyone a thousand bucks. Some of you might not, but I'll end up with a lot more money than I'm going to have to pay out in that bet. Okay? So, don't eat those things. Some people need more protein. Good. Eat high concentrations of protein, such as mung bean sprouts, lentil sprouts, or garbanzo sprouts. You can eat them raw. They'll nourish your good bacteria. Okay? The most important thing is getting those good bacteria supported. Exercise. It helps your aerobic exercise. Helps your bowels move, which is good for your healthy bacteria. Um, Constipation is a major epidemic in the world. If you're constipated, the bad bacteria are winning. It's that simple. Okay? Um, aerobic exercise oxidizes your bloodstream. One of the, be the best way to kill viruses is through oxidizing your bloodstream. There's a doctor, William Hitt. He's one of the doctors on the team who invented the pap smear. I don't know if he's still alive. He was very old when I met him 20 years ago. He left the United States to go to Mexico to have an ozone clinic where you would go in, people would go in with cancer, all kinds of stuff, and he'd plug you into the machine and your blood would run into the machine, get ozonated and come back sans viruses, without the viruses. And his whole focus was we've got to reduce the viral load, reduce the viral load. When the viral load gets reduced, then our immune system doesn't have to fight all those viruses and it can handle other things that come. The food we eat, the lack of sun, which is a disinfectant, the lack of oxygen from aerobic exercise, lets the, makes the viral load high. And so now our immune system has to fight that viral load. When our immune system was never meant to work that hard. Our immune system was to eat foods that didn't support the viral load. It was meant to exercise and oxidize the viral load and get lots of sun and disinfect the viral load. And if we're not doing those three things, you can imagine how much harder our immune system is working. It's working over time. Okay? That's why injuries take so long to heal. We, our body doesn't have the energy to heal a, a sprain anymore. Okay? So, do that too. Um, reduce your viral load through those ways. Okay? There's always going to be viruses. You're never going to escape them. You know, you can't fight every virus off. You know, flu vaccine. Flu deaths and flu rate is five times increase in 10 years, and the flu vaccine has only increased more. You can't fight viruses off. All you can do is get strong enough that they're not a threat to you. Okay? All right. Um, everyone has different dietary needs to make their body feel right, but you got to get the things that nourish those good bacteria and exercise. Um, you can eat foods, fermented foods, raw sauerkraut. Can't be sauerkraut where they make it and they boil it and, and pressurize it because then they kill the bacteria. But any kind of fermented substances, whether it's dairy or vegetables, um, that's been fermented to where it has a living culture in it, eating those can help nourish your intestines back. Okay? Slowly but surely. It's, this is Saturn stuff. It's not going to happen overnight. It's slowly but surely. Fasting, either all on raw food, um, a fast of um, juice fast, the fruit and vegetable juices made fresh on a juicer, or even a grape juice fast with bottled grape juice, you know? It's, it's the wonders, you know? Um, you can go up to nine days. A week is solid for most people. Three days is, is nice. After five days, fasting starts to, your body starts producing t, um, t cells, not T cells, are they T cells? Um, yes, T cells to help you rebuild your body. Um, juice fast, water fast, or um, a hot tea fast, a vegetable fast, fruit, uh, fruit and vegetable juice fast, any of those things will give your body time to catch up, will dramatically reduce your viral load. If you're sick with the flu, 
Um, a fast is usually not the ideal thing. You want to eat some foods that you digest easily, usually when you're in a fever state, unless you just don't want to eat. Um, but sometimes if you fast during a fever, it'll flare up more. You're already in a flared up state, so you want to stay grounded as much as possible during a fever. But during um, an actual time where you're feeling good, take time to fast, you know. Build that immune system up by reducing your viral load dramatically. If you do a week-long fast, everyone's going to say, gosh, you look younger, you look 10 years younger. That's what a week, one week fast will do. I've seen all kinds of amazing healings take place, most amazing with one week fast. I've had people who couldn't walk due to arthritis after a week fasting walk, okay? Reduce that load of toxic burden on your body the fastest way is fasting, okay? Just don't get neurotic about it, okay? And, and think intelligently, look YouTube videos up, get books on it so you know what you're doing. But it's an extremely effective way and a natural way to heal. See, in nature, humans would regularly go through periods where they wouldn't have enough food. You know, all the apples on the tree were gone and were waiting for the grapes to ripen, you know. And there's two weeks where there's no ripe apples and no ripe grapes. So what are you going to do? Well, you wander around and try to find what you could find. And it was never going to be enough. As a result, people regularly in nature had fasts, periods where they fasted and let their body cleanse themselves. Really important part, a natural way to heal. These days, people start panicking if they, don't, if they miss a meal. Oh, no, I'm starving to death. I'm going to die, I miss lunch, I'm headachy and dizzy and I feel like shit. That's not hunger. That is the toxins in your body starting to get removed. Every time you dump food in you, your body goes, oh, it's not going to go digest the food now. But if you don't dump the food, the body's like, I got all this energy, let me go clean your, the house up. Wow, look at all this junk of toxins I put on the bottom of your butt. I'm going to start grabbing those little toxins and put them in the bloodstream and then Get them out to your kidneys and pee them out. And yes, while those toxins leave your wherever and they're lodged in your body, while they go into your bloodstream, you'll feel headachy and weak and dizzy because they're poisonous. The average person, if you take all the toxins in their body and you put it in a cup and you said, drink this, and they drank it, they would fall over dead immediately. That's how big of a toxic load we have these days. And it's stored in your body, it's stored in your stiff joints that hurt, it's stored in your arthritis, it's stored in your cellulite, it's stored under your skin, it's stored in your fat tissues. You know, it's why you see these hot actors, you know, like Leonardo DiCaprio, DiCaprio, when they're young and cute, looking so cute, and now you look and their thick the skin on their face is twice as thick. What happened to that thin, normal skin? Why is the skin on their face twice as fat now? Because it's swollen with toxic loads, you know. When you fast, do a cleanse, you, you just get rid of all that toxic load. And all of a sudden your skin looks thin, you know, the way it's supposed to be. It's not swollen with toxins under it, okay. So, these are the things we need to do, alright. And then you have to have a regular foundation of healthy food and regular aerobic exercise. It has to be aerobic. You need to breathe hard, okay. Unless you have an amazing stalwart lover, sex does not count. You need to get out there in the fresh air and breathe hard, okay? Um, as hard as you can handle comfortably, all right? Walking is all, if walking's enough, if that's all you can do, you just have to walk longer. Running's the best. Um, nothing moves your lymph like running. Um, Walking also moves your lymph, which is critical to health. Your lymph is constantly flushing and keeping all your cells pure, and your lymph needs to be purified through motion. You don't have a lymph pump. Your heart does not pump your lymph. It only pumps the blood. Your ankles, calves pump your lymph more than anything. Walking and running make your body, your lymph flow. And also jumping on the trampoline is really good for that. Okay? So those are some things you guys need to do. And then one thing I do, my rule is, if I'm not going to die in 24 hours, I'm not going to go get any dramatic medication, any medication, really. If I'm not going to die in 24 hours, I'll just kick back, let my body get through it. Unless you can't, but you always give your body the first right of refusal to cure you. Okay, eat good foods, um, take a rest, and if... Um, you know, if, then you'll know if you need to get more serious with some antibiotics or cortisone drugs. 
But I realize every time you take those drugs that have a list of side effects, you've just taken your immune system down. You're going to have to work harder now to eat better, exercise more, rebuild your intestinal bacteria to build it up. Okay? Another great thing to do to help the viral load is like that Dr. Hit does with the ozone treatments. You can get ozone generators at home and, and, and work with ozone to help detox. It's expensive though. Um, and nothing beats fasting and just some regular times where you give your body a bunch of nourishing food with no junk at all. And by junk I mean anything you put on a stove to cook or any, or any grains. Okay? Grains are for the birds. We know we're not designed to eat bird food. Okay? Um, we don't have the intestines to properly digest bird food, okay? Birds do. Our human intestinal system is designed for fruits. Fruits are a lot sweeter than they used to be. Um, we've been bred to make them kind of unbalanced, unfortunately. So we need more vegetables than ever. Vegetables are the medications, are the herbs that help our body maintain a balance when we eat too much sugar or we eat too much protein or any too much of something. The, the herbs, the plants, the lettuce, things like that helps our body maintain an equilibrium and a health um, with the minerals that are in there. So you really need those too. Um, oh gosh, one other thing I wanted to say. Darn it. Okay, so basically start living more healthily. It's really important. Otherwise, if we don't as a race, if we keep doing what we've done, if we keep doing what we've been doing since the 70s, which is ma major over-medication, Everyone's working in an office, sitting on their butts on their computer, lack of exercise, and then, you know, unhealthy diets. Then what we just saw this year, what we're seeing with the corona, the numbers of death, dead that we're seeing, honestly, this corona is a baby compared to what exists out there. You know, on a viral level, corona is a baby, you know. It's not the smallpox, you know. It's not typhoid. There's way worse things out there. There have been way worse things out there. We can get a much serious epidemic, you know, and, um, you know, this is just a, a flu. It's a, it's, a, it's a pumped up flu, you know, but God, there's worse things out there and humans will suffer more devastating epidemics than this if we don't start building up our immune systems. And that's what Pluto, the Pluto South Node, K2, Saturn, are telling us when this all happens in the Saturn sign that, as it fell in December of 2019. Okay, So it's a serious business. We have to do it. Alright, I hope you're going to go eat better and get some exercise. Perfect time for it, right? Um, good time to get some raw cookbooks. Learn some fun things to make. Um, stay away from excessive nuts. Don't eat a lot of cashews. Cashews have a little bit of mold on them. Eat a lot of cashews, especially raw ones, you'll get sick. Same with peanuts. Don't eat raw peanuts and cashews. Um, other raw foods, find out what your body likes. Okay, um, And low-fat diets always important too for maintaining your immune system. Okay, Unless you're on a fat and protein vegetable diet. But if you eat anything that's sweet, you need to be on a low-fat diet. Sweet foods do not like a fat high-fat diet. Oh, and one other thing that's huge for reducing your viral load is no sugar. I mean, sugar is the worst thing to eat. Sugar feeds the bad guys. You know, everything in your body that you're trying to kill, that you don't want to kill you, is going to, you're feeding it the minute you eat sugar. If you need to eat something sweet, raw honey is the, is the healthiest alternative. It's the only alternative I consider healthy. Agave syrup, no. Maple syrup, no. Those are treats. They're not for our daily use. Normal sugar, never. The main culprit to gaining weight is a little sugar. Even a teaspoon of junk sugar every day can make the difference between losing weight and not. It's, it's not just the amount of calories in that teaspoon. It's what it does to your whole system. And it feeds the bad guys, the guys you, who you want to reduce. And my, one of my favorite authors, Bernard Cornwell, he writes a lot of books on historical novels. It's a lot of fun, really, if you want to laugh. Um, you know, he said, war is about food. The army that's fed better wins. 
You know, it's that simple. It's about food. You know, the, the fed army wins. So if you're eating junk food with lots of sugar in it, or junk food with rancid oil on it, things that have been fried and put in bags and you get them and eat them out of the bag with old oil, and especially sugar, you're basically saying, well, I've got all these bacteria on my side trying to keep me healthy, and I've got these bacteria and viruses on the opposite side trying to kill me, and I'm going to feed the opposing side. That's what, Every time you put sugar in your mouth, you're feeding the army that wants to kill you. And you're starving the army that wants to protect you, which means you will die a premature death and you will have more diseases as you get old. What they call, you know, old diseases, you know. No, there's no such thing as old diseases. There's only abusing your body or taking care of it, okay? So we have to take care of it. The number one thing everyone should do right now is no sugar. I should have said that first. It just kept slipping in my mind. No sugar, no soft drinks, no sugar in your tea, no sugar in your coffee, get honey. Ideally raw, okay? Um, sugar just feeds the viruses and, you know, just destroys your immune system. Last thing you want to take, okay? All right. I hope some people enjoyed this. Um, didn't mean to rant about the health, te you know, things, but these are just some ideas to get you hopefully inspired. It's fun to feel good. And you have time to try these things if you're in lockdown and stuck at home. It's a wonderful time to try new recipes. Try just eating fruit for a day or vegetables for a day and see how you feel, you know. Because you don't have to go to work maybe, you know. You can sit around and watch Netflix all day if you feel a little funny from eating a different meal. Um, because you will feel an adjustment for a couple days when you change your diet. Okay, thank you.